welcome to this module on uh, bacteria uh, structure and properties. Um, in last uh, several mo uh, modules I have already um, covered uh, various aspects of the eukaryotic cells that is truly nucleated, uh, truly nucleated cells particularly their structure as well as different cell fate process and so on. So, in this uh, module I will concentrate more on the bacteria. Now, why bacteria is uh, equally important as uh, uh, like cells in the context of uh, bone tissue engineering applications because uh, that whenever any implant which goes into that human patient, uh, there are always chances for prosthetic infection which is largely attributed to the uh, colonization of the bacteria on an implant surface or colonization of the bacteria leading to the biofilm formation on an implant surface. So, therefore, some of the things that I will be uh, discussing in this, I uh, will be discussing in this uh, module uh, is that uh, how the bacteria structure is different from an eukaryotic cell structure. And second thing that uh, how this um, biofilm formation takes place which is preceded by ba bacteria material interaction. So, bacteria material interaction bacterial growth on a material surface leading to biofilm formation that will be also uh, central theme of the uh, of this particular module discussion. So, this slide essentially shows you uh, more um, widely known bacteria that is that E. coli, Escheria coli and <coughs> what you see here it is a very unicellular organism as you know that prokaryote may have a, 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 this is a typical prokaryotic cells and it is a size is 1 to 2 micron. Uh, this uh, fundamental difference between the structure of a bacterial cell as well as and then that of that eukaryotic cell is that bacterial cell does not have a well defined compartmentalized nucleus or other membrane bounded organelles. And this typically this they, they do not have any well defined nucleus as a result you can see um, all through the <coughs> all through the cytoplasm or uh, cytosol your nuclear uh, uh, this DNA is dispersed and the ribosomes just like eukaryotic cells they are also present in the bacterial cell and this is the site for the protein synthesis. Now, in the context of the cell migration I have mentioned certain podia that typically eukaryotic cell they have this podia if um, uh, are phylopodia and lamellopodia. So, this phylopodia and lamellopodia they help in the cell motility or cell locomotion on a biomaterial substrate and I have compared them <coughs> in more simplistic terms it is like a uh, cell migration is somewhat analogous to that baby crawling on a floor and then baby when crawls then baby uses both uh, hands as well as legs. So, similarly in a biological cell eukaryotic cell you have certain podia like phylopodia, lamellopodia those podia they help uh, in the cell migration. Similarly, here in the context of bacteria you can see that it has a certain large tail like structure which is known as the flagella and this, this is also there are small hair like structure you can see that is coming appear as an outgrowth to the from the cell uh, bacterial cell wall or cell membrane they are known as pili. So, pili and flagella they are they help in the bacterial attachment on a biomaterial substrate and particularly flagella help in the motility flagella is this longer uh, <coughs> a longer structure. Uh, which you can see very clearly longer tail like structure that particularly helps in motility or migration of the bacteria. Okay. <coughs> Depending on uh, different shapes and size uh, you can classify the bacteria 
uh, in terms of this uh, cocci that is a spherical cells like staph, uh, streptococcus. Then you have the rod shaped bacteria that is Escheria coli, Vibrio cholerae, and <coughs> you have the spiral cells. And also, you have uh, this is the typical uh, uh, rod shaped bacteria I have already mentioned during the last slide. So, this cocci, particularly Staphylococci, these are more pathogenic bacteria. That means these are like Staphylococcus aureus, and there is another strain called Staphylococcus epidermidis. So, these Staphylococcus aureus and Staphylococcus epidermidis, these are two bacterial strain. They actually cause most of the bacterial infection. So, you have that other uh, cocci species like streptococci and so on. So, those are not that much used in the biomaterials research to assess the bacterial infection or the possibility of bacterial colonization of the material substrate, but most widely used bacteria which are used in the biomaterials research is this one that is E. coli. Escheria coli, that which is a gram negative bacteria, and the spherical shaped like A. epidermidis or A. aureus, these are like two other gram positive bacteria which are used widely uh, in research on biomaterials. So, this is the summary of what I have said just now, and uh, now <coughs> this uh, slide essentially shows you that how this E. coli bacteria they adhere on a material substrate. So, this is your porous material substrate here. So, this is your material substrate and on a material substrate then this E. coli bacteria they are adhering. And you can see this is the signs of the flagella from this E. coli bacteria and this flagella are actually the sites of the firm attachment of a bacteria on a biomaterial substrate. So, this is again uh, if you remember your that uh, school biology, uh, this is that depending on the gram staining you have you the bacteria can be classified to two classes that is one is that gram positive and another one is called gram negative. So, gram positive and gram negative these are the most widely used classifications in the microbiology. The examples of the gram negative bacteria is that E. coli and examples of the gram positive bacteria I mentioned just few minutes ago, it is a Staphylococcus that is aureus and epidermidis. They stain certainly differently than from the E. coli and also shape wise E. coli is uh, very different from that of the Staphylococcus species. One of the things that distinguishes these two classes of bacteria gram positive and gram negative is the way their cell membrane or their membrane is being built up. So, <coughs> this is uh, uh, this slide essentially compares these two type of bacteria uh, gram positive and gram negative. So, gram positive always appear like either dark blue or violet while as gram with gram staining agent and when stained this with gram staining agent, uh, counter staining with uh, 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 safranin, then it appears gram negative like E. coli, they appear more like red or pink. So, in the gram positive, you have a thick peptidoglycan layer, and in gram negative, you have an extremely thin peptidoglycan layer. So, let me discuss this with clarity here in this particular slide. So, this is your gram positive bacterial cell membrane. So, you can see just like a eukaryotic cell, you also have a double layer kind of a structure. The and you can see there are a lot of proteins which are which are at which are attached to the inner wall and you have a reasonably thick peptidoglycan layer. So, you can see this peptidoglycan layer if the thickness is T1, if the peptidoglycan layer which is uh, which is thickness this particular thickness peptidoglycan layer is T2 certainly T1 is greater than T2. So, that means peptidoglycan layer in the gram uh, positive bacteria like Staphylococcus species is much thicker than the peptidoglycan layer in the gram negative bacteria. 
Okay. So, that is the number one point. Number two point is that gram negative bacteria uh, like E. coli, they represent a very characteristic uh, three layer structure with peptidoglycan layer being sandwiched between the two uh, layers, one is the top layer and one is the bottom layer. And as usual like with eukaryotic cell, your there are several transmembrane proteins also which you can see very clearly here in that uh, gram negative bacteria. So, in a way the cell uh, bacterial wall in the gram negative is much more thicker and also it is quite different from that of the gram positive bacteria. Now, once the bacteria starts growing in a growth medium. So, typically in that cell biology literature uh, eukaryotic cells for the eukaryotic cells people tend to use as a culture medium which is mostly DMEM or alpha MEM based culture medium. In case of the bacteria culture people use growth medium it is a more loria growth growth medium. So, this growth medium and culture medium somehow this terminology is more segregated in the microbiology and cell biology respectively. So, <coughs> bacterial growth also follows uh, similar kind of growth pattern like in the in the case of uh, other cells. So, 1 to 2, 2 to 4 and so on. So, you can see that how fast only difference between the eukaryotic cell and uh, bacterial cell is that here growth kinetics is much faster compared to eukaryotic cell. Typical doubling time in bacteria is somewhere between 30 to 40 minutes. You remember in the last to last module I have mentioned that typical doubling time for eukaryotic cells is almost like few hours like human cells mostly the cell doubling time is 11 to 12 hours. Here in case of bacteria this is half an hour. So, less than 1 hour that is the typical doubling time for the bacteria. So, second thing that has been mentioned that has been shown here. So, okay, depending on that the necessity for the oxygen in the growth medium you have aerobic bacteria and anaerobic bacteria microbes essentially. The third thing is that that how this growth takes place. So, essentially you have a very initial period of lag phase. So, lag phase is more like incubation kind of period where the bacteria has not yet started to grow in a normal manner. You have a log or exponential phase here the time <coughs> the generation time is defined as a T d divided by 3.3 log n divided by n naught. So, this comes from a very simple equations. The simple equations has been written here that is the number of bacteria at any given time point t is equal to n naught that is the initial bacterial concentration at the beginning of the cell uh, at the beginning of the bacterial growth conditions and t d is the generation time or doubling time. So, essentially I repeat this simple equation essentially tells you the number of bacteria at any given time t n capital N is equal to n naught e multiplied by 2 to the power t by t d where t d is the generation or doubling time uh, and uh, t is that any given time and n naught is the number of bacterial cells at the beginning of the uh, growth conditions. Now, after this uh, log or exponential phase bacteria reaches the steady state phase that is the growth uh, stationary phase and if you grow it further longer longer then it enters into the death phase. So, the way this kind of uh, bacterial growth conditions uh, bacterial growth kinetics they follow this kind of uh, uh, this kind of qualitative description of this bacterial growth kinetics to some extent is little different from the way the eukaryotic cells they grow in culture. Now, how you can quantify this kind of growth kinetics? One of the most standard and widely used method is spectrophotometer. As the name suggests that means that there is certain light 
wave uh, uh, light ray of certain wavelength will be made to pass through the bacterial growth medium uh, once without bacteria and once a blank solution like uh, that is the blank solution and one case with bacteria actual growth medium containing bacteria. In both the cases you measure the intensity of the transmitted uh, beam and uh, optical density is typically noted as uh, is typically measured determined by logarithmic of the ratio of the I naught by I. Okay. So, from there you can find out that what is the optical density of any bacterial growth uh, uh, conditions. Okay. Now, <coughs> so coming to this uh, how this uh, bacterial uh, bacteria will attach to the biomaterial substrate. So, this is your individual bacteria which is shown here. Now, this bacteria will come to the biomaterial substrate. Now, they will uh, they will essentially form specific adhesion complexes here and this mechanism has been discussed in little bit more details in a stage wise manner. So, you have a freely suspended bacteria in the growth medium and the same growth medium you are implant you are placing your biomaterial substrate. So, individual bacteria will come and will attach to uh, the bacteria then it will form a monolayer concentration. Once this monolayer forms then subsequent bacteria will come here and will get attached to the single bacteria. So, what I am trying to show you here that the single bacteria which initially has come and adhered on the material substrate is capable of forming an individual colony on the biomaterial substrate. I repeat a single bacteria suppose it is shown here 5 bacteria has been attached to the biomaterial substrate. So, what I am saying that ideally single bacteria can form single colony that means, the single bacteria can generate now 5 different colonies on the same biomaterial substrate. Out of this just for illustration purpose we are showing here 2 such colonies, but actually it can potentially form 5 such colonies. Okay. Uh, now, in this colony formation essentially is favorable or its colony form colony is more stable if the bacteria now can secrete and form some polysaccharide matrix which is shown here like a eolish kind of substance. This eolish matrix polysaccharide matrix help the bacteria colony to clue among the constituent bacteria and that actually uh, helps bacterial colony to grow further in size as you can see this is one colony this is second colony. So, this is growing in size, but this growth cannot take place in an indefinite manner. In other words after the number of bacteria goes to a large number then these individual bacteria can fall off from the colony and this makes this means that this is that concentration that has reached that is the bacterial colony that more than that this individual colony cannot contain more number of bacteria. Okay. The now this colonization of the bacteria and bacteria colony formation is the first step. Now, if you grow this bacteria for a sufficiently longer time period then what will happen? that this, this total uh, sample uh, is uh, total biomaterial substrate will be covered with full of bacteria. Now, intentionally we are showing here this spherical bacteria that staphylococcus staphylococcus species it can be either aureus or epidermidis. Now, why we are showing I have mentioned few minutes ago that S aureus or epidermidis are the most pathogenic bacteria they are most responsible for prosthetic infection. So, therefore, as uh, showing this biofilm formation also which is uh, in, uh, which is instigated by this colonization and then extracellular polysaccharide matrix formation to a mature biofilm. So, biofilm formation 
you can observe or is possible only when this bacteria is cultured for an extended time period in growth medium. Now, this, this earlier one was this more qualitative discussion based on that our understanding that how bacterial adhesion and biofilm forms and the way biofilm has been mentioned or biofilm has been defined, it is a multiple layer of bacteria covered with a polysaccharide matrix. So, that is how uh, uh, bacterial biofilm is being defined here. Okay. Now, this is little bit more theoretical considerations of the different stages of the bacterial adhesion to material surfaces. The first one is the physiochemical uh, interactions between bacterial material surfaces. You have several forces of attraction like you have the van der Waals forces of attractions, you have the gravitational forces and also you have a hydrophobic interaction. Now, these interactions mostly falls under the two category, one is a long range and what is the short range. Short range essentially means within a few nanometer from the material substrate, these interactions are essentially facilitated by dipolar and hydrophobic interaction as well as weak hydrogen bonds. But in the long range interaction which is taken place more than 150 nanometer and away, so this is a function of distance and free energy. Second one is that phase 2 that is molecular and cellular interactions between bacteria and material substrate. So, here again it is the same type of interaction like ligand receptor interaction between bacterial cell surface receptor and ligands supported by proteins absorbed into the material surface. So, this mechanism is similar to that of that eukaryotic cell adhesion on a material substrate. And second one is the bridging function of bacterial surface polymeric structures which include capsules, fimbri or pili and slime. So, this is also another level of uh, another reason for quicker adhesion of bacteria on a material substrate. So, this is how has been shown here little bit more clearly. So, you have that bacterial adhesion and attachment to the surface, then it is the attached cell monolayer, then cell cell adhesion they had this polysaccharide extracellular matrix deposition around the bacterial colony that helps as a glue. Then this colony grow in size to a critical number and then subsequently when it uh, exceeds the critical number, then it detaches and that is how it happens, uh, that is how it leads to a more mature biofilm formation. Now, having said this, let me explain you or let me at least mention some of the important factors which influence the bacterial adhesion. These factors include environmental factors, environment means that bacterial micro environment like I have mentioned in the last few modules that cellular microenvironment plays an important role the way cells will decide that which fed processes cells will adapt. Similarly, environmental parameters like temperature, time period of exposure, bacterial density, chemical treatment or nutrient medium or antibiotics. So, these things are equally important. Second one is that bacterial characteristics like what is the cell wall structure whether it is gram negative, gram positive, what is the bacterial hydrophobicity and surfaces that is important. Material surface characteristics these are kind of similar to that of the cell material interaction essentially what is the surface roughness or topography or what is the weightability or surface hydrophobicity or hydrophilicity these are important. Fourth one is the serum or tissue proteins mostly if you put a by if you coat the bacterial uh, biomaterial with certain albumin proteins and all that typically reduces the bacterial adhesion. But if you coat them with fibrinogen that essentially encourages the bacterial attachment to material surfaces. So, it does not necessarily mean that all proteins have some repelling properties towards the bacterial adhesion. In fact, some of the proteins can essentially encourage more and more bacterial attachment which should be avoided. Fifth one is that specific adhesion like selective binding between bacterial surface receptors and ligands 
on the substratum that the fibronectin that is a host protein that covers implant surfaces that also important. Because if you remember on a when a biological cell adheres to a material substrate just like if you go back to this slide and if you recall the way a eukaryotic cell is attached is attached to the is attached to a biomaterial substrate is quite different to some extent and then this cell signaling processes take place and then another cell comes. So, this this multiple cell that comes and then attach it takes lot of time for the eukaryotic cells to take place. But here in case of bacteria being physically much smaller than that eukaryotic cells. So, typically the eukaryotic cell size is 25 to 30 micron whereas, this kind of bacteria it is 1 to 2 micron. So, it is much much lesser than that of the eukaryotic cells and also different dynamics involved in this biological medium it is also kinetically much slower because it involves lot of signaling processes to take place in case of eukaryotic cells whereas, in bacteria this process somehow takes place faster particularly the doubling time is also much faster than eukaryotic cells. So, that this colonization and mature biofilm formation also takes place even greater than 4 hours of culture. Now, greater than 4, so 4 hours of culture in case of eukaryotic cell you would not be able to see many of the cells on the material substrate because mostly the culture period is in case of eukaryotic cell is greater than 24 hours. So, 24 hours minimum culture period and then in some of the faster growing cells you can see 24 48 hours, but some of the slower growing cells you start seeing the cells on a material substrate only after 48 hours then you have to grow the cells for a much longer time period. Now, this kind of comparison between the way eukaryotic cells interact on a material substrate and the way uh, eukaryotic cells adhere and makes the colony that this kind of comparison is very important for you to understand and assimilate. Now, this is the snapshot of this how this uh, entire protocol of the bacterial culture as well as that in the context of the bi investigation with biomaterials is followed in the lab scale. So, you have that any of the sample or test sample or material or what we call pellet you do polishing after that you do ultrasonication and then do sterilization. Then after sterilization you do several stages of the washing with ethanol and phosphate buffer saline. Then you seed the bacteria, um, is then you seed the bacteria on the material substrate in a typical biosafety cabinet or laminar flow depending on um, the type of bacteria you are dealing. Then after that you have to put it in the incubator this bacteria, uh, bacteria along with the uh, materials. Now, remember here in the bacteria you do not require the continuous flow of CO2 like you require for the eukaryotic cell culture. So, bacteria growth takes place in the normal aerated environment, normal ambient environment. Only thing that you have to maintain is 37 degree Celsius temperature and ambient environment is what you need to what you need to ensure in a in a bacteria culture room. Then after the bacteria is grown for uh, 1 to 4 hours or diff diff different time period then you can wash by PBS and fixation and then you do either critical point dryer or some of the reagent for drying and then after that you can use that frozen microscope or scanning electron microscope to see how the bacteria adhere on the material substrate. So, <coughs> this, uh, uh, this after this bacteria culture is over then you can count that how many bacteria they have grown on the material substrate and how kinetically it changes the growth pattern compared to when the similar bacteria is grown uh, in an isolation like without any material substrate. So, I will stop it now and then we will go to the next one.